Hi, it's Miss Patty from Sunday School. We've got one of the best stories to do today. I'm so happy with it. Do you remember the song we did last week? It was about Jesus loves me and we did signs to it. Let's try that again because today's story is about Jesus. Are you ready? See if you can do it. We'll do it slow because I'm not very fast at it. You've got your middle finger and you're going to touch the palm of your hand. That's going to talk about Jesus. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he, whoops, I have to go, he is strong. And then we do a nod. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right. So your moms and dads might have gotten a message this week saying that you could dress up and act out the story if you wanted to. So I'm going to tell the story and I'll use the flannel board. But if we were really in Sunday school together, you would have costumes, and even if you didn't, we would pretend, and you could be different characters. So I had my grandkids over here today, and they acted out this part of the story for you. And when this, when our lesson gets done, there's another little video if you want to see how they acted it out. But you can act it out as we go. So there was a woman. You know who it was, right? Who is this? Mary. Mm -hmm. There was a woman. Let me get that a little bit closer for you. There. And something miraculous happened. An angel visited her. Wow. She was surprised. And look how happy she looks. Because that angel had good news for her. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. God loves you so much. You will be the mother of a special baby boy. Name that baby Jesus. This baby will grow up to be very great. And he will be God's special son. The angel also came to Joseph. And told Joseph that the baby that Mary will have will be very special. Name the baby Jesus. And then the angel was gone. Okay, the months were very busy. Mary and Joseph got ready for the baby. And then they had to travel. They had to go to Bethlehem to pay their taxes. You can see that probably Mary, since she was getting ready to have a baby, she might have gotten to ride on a donkey. We think that maybe she did. Because it was a pretty long ways to walk. So they had a long ways, and they, uh, when they got there, they found that a whole bunch of other people were also in Bethlehem to pay their taxes. And they didn't have a home in Bethlehem, because that's not where they lived. They were just visiting, so they needed to stay somewhere like a hotel. But they didn't have what they call hotels. They called it an inn. And the people could stay at an inn. So the donkey's hooves went clippity-clop, clippity-clop, all the while. And then they, at night, they would stop to rest. It took them, I think it took them a couple of weeks, but I know it took them more than one day. It was several days. Finally, they came to Bethlehem. And it was so, so crowded. This was a big problem. Mary was getting close to having that baby. And they went to an innkeeper. And they said, Joseph said, Could you rent us a room? We need to have a place to sleep. And the innkeeper said, Sorry, you know, we're all filled up. Uh, why don't you check down the way, see if somebody over there has one. So Mary and Joseph had to go a little further, 
and they got to another innkeeper, a different one, and they said, uh, please, sir, do you have a room? We've been traveling an awfully long time, and we're very tired, and Mary's going to have a baby. I really need to get her into a, a place to stay, into an inn. And the innkeeper said, you know, I would like to help you, but I just don't have any room. I, I, I'm i all filled up. No, you'll just have to keep looking. Okay, so they went along some more. They got to another inn. And finally, they found an innkeeper who said, well, there's no room at all in my inn, but if you want to sleep in the stable where the animals are, it would be warm. It would be better than being outside. But I'm sorry, I just don't have any room for you. Well, Mary and Joseph thought it was the best that they could do. And so they got ready for Mary to have the baby. That night, something miraculous happened. The baby boy was born. Do you see down here, they call this the manger. That's where it would be a soft bed for baby Jesus, but usually it was where the animals would eat. This was a very humble place for him to be born. He was the son of God, but he wasn't born to a fancy rich king. He was just born to a regular person because he was going to be the king of all the people. He wasn't going to be the king of just the rich people. He was going to be a king for everyone. And Mary wrapped him up in a blanket and they kept him nice and warm. And that was the way how baby Jesus was born in the manger. Don't you love that story? Next week we're going to find out what happens next. Because there's a lot more to the story about baby Jesus being born. Here's our activity page for today. There's the stickers we have. See those okay? And this sticker up here says one right here. And I think we're supposed to put that. Here's Mary and Joseph, and they're going to go on this path. They have to travel. It kind of looks like they had to go through a desert area with some mountains. Looks like it was a long ways. Mary's riding on the donkey in that picture. And then they had to stop and rest for a while. Here they are stopping to rest. They're still traveling, traveling. It looks like they might have met some other people that were also traveling. They might have asked them, where can we stay? They're traveling, traveling. They've got their donkey. They have a long ways to go. They have to ask the innkeeper, do you have room at the inn? What does this innkeeper say? Well, first, he had some people maybe here and here that said no, but finally, they found somebody who said, well, you can stay in the stable down here with the animals. And that's where baby Jesus was born. He wasn't born in a rich king's palace. He was born in a humble stable. And on your stickers, it says God's son, Jesus, was born. And it has a picture of a manger there. This one says, draw a line to match the missing puzzle piece in each puzzle. So here's three puzzle pieces, and one of them fits right here. Which one do you think it is that fits right there? I don't think it's this little boy because I can see him over here. What do we see that's missing in this picture? It looks to me like this person's coat is missing. And maybe there's somebody's head there. Does this one have a coat? 
Ah, look at this one. There's a coat and there's a boy without his head. So I think this picture goes right there. Did I get it right? I think I did. All right, let's see this one. We are so glad that Jesus, God's son, was born. What is something your family does to be glad and celebrate at Christmas time? I have a story I'm going to read you about that. So now we need one that has a straight edge here. There's a straight edge, a straight edge, and a straight edge. So that doesn't really help us. It has to have a hole and a hole. And this has a hole and a hole, a hole and a hole. That doesn't really help us. It needs to have a knot on top. But they all have a knot on top. So now we have to look and say, what is missing in this picture? It looks like there might be a little bit of fire at the top there. Maybe part of this person's pink sweater. It looks like maybe a brick fireplace or something with candles, possibly. I don't see a fire in that one. I don't think it's that one. I'll put an X on that one. Oh, there's the doggy, and there's the doggy, so it's not that one. Look, here's the fire. I can see that that one would go right there. And that's how we do the sheep. We don't have a family page today, but I do have a good Christmas book for you. Let me get that for you. Okay, here's the book. It's called A Very Merry... Christmas prayer. Here's my merry Christmas prayer I'll send to God above for all the gifts he's given from a heart filled with love. I'm trying to turn this light so it doesn't shine quite so much on the book. That might be a little bit better. Thank you, God, for strings of light, so twinkling and bright, just like the star that led wise men on that special night. We're going to hear about the wise men in another week. Thank you, God, for home sweet home. I love my cozy bed, just like the manger that you gave to cradle our Lord's head. We heard about the manger today, didn't we? Thank you, God, for songs of joy, your praises everywhere, just like the host of angel voices floated through the air. And there's a song about our part of the story today. Are you still dressed up? Did you try and dress up and follow along? Did you act it out? Well, here's the song. It goes, um, away in a manger. Remember, that's where the baby slept, right? Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. That's part of a song that's about this part of our story, isn't it? You might have some caroling if you have uh, some people that you sing with in your house or you go somewhere maybe outside and people are singing. Sometimes you might go somewhere and hear music because we think a lot about carols and music at Christmas time. Thank you God for family time. You bless us one and all just like the love that Mary felt inside that humble stall. The stall was where the animals stayed. Thank you, God, for trees of green dressed up from tip to top. Just like your glory fills the earth, your goodness does not stop. Thank you, God, for gifts we give to show the world your love, just like the lasting gifts you give, sweet blessings from above.
Thank you, God, for candles lit on frosty Christmas eves. Just like your love shines in our hearts, your presence never leaves. My granddaughter said today that candles are important at Christmas time, and especially important because some families light an Advent candle, and they change every week. They light a new candle getting closer and closer to Christmas. They might change the color of the candles. Sometimes the the way we do it in our family is the third week the candle is pink because that's a week of joy. And then when Jesus comes, usually we have purple candles, then we have the one pink candle, and then when Jesus comes, we have the white candle for Jesus because he was so special and so holy. Thank you, God, for candles lit on frosty Christmas Eve. Just like your love shines in our hearts, your presence never leaves. I already read that one, but you get to hear it twice. Thank you, God, for yummy treats, handmade with love and care, just like the good things that you give to bring joy everywhere. Sometimes we make cookies at our house. It's all part of Christmas, isn't it? Thank you, God, for sparkly snowflakes coating earth in white. Just like forgiveness makes us pure, we're brand new in your sight. Thank you, God, for wreaths of holly hung upon each door, just like your love that welcomes us to live forevermore. The wreath is a big circle, and it goes around and around and around. It never ends, like God's love. Thank you, God, for listening to my Merry Christmas prayer, for sending Jesus, Lord and King, a gift that's always there. That's the most important thing about Christmas, isn't it? It's not about Santa Claus. And it's not about the presents we might have under the tree. It's not even just about us giving to other people. That makes us feel good especially if we know somebody really needs something and we can give them some cookies we make or maybe we have some toys or some clothes we can give to people who really need it. That makes us feel good. But the most important thing is because that's when Jesus was born. This is like Jesus' birthday. And we want to always remember him. I'll bet you're ready for a puppet show. Listen, boys and girls, do you hear something? Callie? Meow, meow. Where are you? <laughs> Callie, what are you doing in there? Meow, meow. I found an amazing place. I like to play in bags. <laughs> You're in a bag. I didn't know where you were. I didn't know that bags were amazing places. Oh, yes, they really are. You can hide right in them. <laughs> Boys and girls, can you see Callie's tail? She kind of hid in the bag, but... Oops. There. She kind of hid in the bag. Meow. Oh, I love bags. <laughs> well, bags are amazing, I guess, if you're a kitty cat. Yes, I had even something better. Oh, what did you have that was better? Well, it had four sides, and it was flat, and it was brown, and it had a hole in the top, and it was flat on the bottom, and I jumped inside, and it fit perfectly. <laughs> perfectly, like a kitty purrs? Yeah, it was perfect. Well, I wonder what it was, boys and girls. What do you think that would be? It had four sides, it was flat on the bottom, she could jump in the top. Yeah, it was perfect. What was it made of? Oh, it was cardboard. Ah, does that help us? What happened to it? Well, my person put some gifts in it and took it to the mail lady. And I'm not going to get to play in it anymore. It was a box. I love boxes. Yes, boxes are fun, aren't they? Boys and girls, have you ever played in boxes? Sometimes we have a big box when we're in our Sunday school room. Oh, I love little boxes because I'm little. Do you like boxes that are just your size? Yeah, that can be kind of fun. 
I like to fit in things that are cozy. Well, I don't get to play in that box anymore, but I still have a bag. And then the people who get the gift, maybe they could play with the box. Yeah, I think maybe they can. And you can play with the bags. Meow, yeah, meow. Well, in our class today, we're talking about something that makes us happy. Really? Is it as exciting as a brand new box? <laughs> well, I think it's a lot better than that. We're glad because God's son, Jesus, was born. And at Christmas time, we get to celebrate his birthday. Oh, I like birthdays. That's a really big meow. <laughs> yeah, it is, Callie. Bye-bye. You can go play in your bag. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, I hope you're going to have a beautiful Christmas. And we get to keep talking about the Christmas story next time, too. Remember, Jesus loves you. Bye for now. Woof, 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 woof. Well, hi, you look like you're pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, I love Christmas. I'm so excited. I'm going to have presents and Santa Claus and, oh boy, I love all the food. Well, that's true. We get some of those things at Christmas, but do you know that there's something more important about Christmas? More important than Santa Claus? <laughs> yes, definitely. I've got my grandkids here, and they can help you learn the story about the real story of Christmas. Oh, okay. I can hardly wait. All right, boys and girls, are you ready to hear the real story? All right, here we go. So Mary and Joseph had traveled a long ways with their faithful donkey that probably Mary had been riding on. And when they got to Bethlehem, it was all filled up with people. And so they had to go to an inn, and Joseph knocked on the door. Yeah, who is it? Um, my wife Mary is gonna help me. Sorry, I can't help you, we're full. Ah, oh, say, I needed a place to sleep. I need a place to sleep! I'm sorry, but we're full, I can't help you. Okay. Go down the next street! Go to the next one. Okay, come back, and we'll try knocking here. Ready? No, I'm here with the middle of the... Oh, sorry, we're full. Uh, what do you need, though? We need a place to sleep. Oh, I'm sorry. As I said earlier, we're full. You're a new innkeeper. We need a different innkeeper. Oh, yes, but I am... We are full. Oh, and... Okay. All right, so go down the street, try somebody else. And here you are, back to the third place. Maybe they'll have something for you. Explain how urgent it is. Yes, who is it? I don't want that English settler person. Okay, fine. Uh, yes, who is it? Um, I'm Joseph. We, I'm Joseph, and my wife Mary's going to have a baby, and we need a place to sleep. We need a place to sleep, man. Good. <laughs> well, there is one place you can stay, but... What? A stable. But it's in it's in the stable, so and it's not that good, so it's kind of stinky. <laughs> Say that's good. We can get out of the weather. We'll Fine, take we'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that right this way. And that very night, a miracle happened, and baby Jesus was born in a humble stable. Humble. A humble stable. And that's where baby Jesus was born, and that's why we remember Christmas. <laughs>